Another day before me What will I behold If I'm sad or angry I know I'm not alone When I think I won't make it I remember your word And know I am protected And lose all my concern Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you for watching uh, the broadcast today. Um, my co-host is not with us today, Sarah Miles. Praise God for Jesus. That's all I have to say. <laughs> because in a world that we live in today, and in America, um, Jesus is the only answer. He's been the only answer since he's been uh, born as a babe. Uh, as a virgin uh, into this world over 2,000 years ago. And people don't realize that time how much they need the Lord, how much they need God. First of all, you can't go to heaven without God through Jesus Christ and receiving him in your heart. And Jesus said you must be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of God. So unless you give your life to Christ and repent of your sin, then you, unfortunately, you know, you're going to die. Everybody's going to die and be eternally lost forever. And hell is so bad that God wants nobody to go there. Nobody to go there. He wishes all to come to Christ. And the, the hardest people to come to Christ are those that are religious. Because they're brought up in their religion and they swear by their religion and their religion is what they're clinging to. But Jesus is not a religious, he's a person. And he died for our sins so that you could have eternal life by accepting him into, into your heart. And uh, the world needs Christ. Uh, there's no hope. I mean, when everything was taken away from the coronavirus, uh, what did people have? Whatever their God was, um, it's it was gone and there's an emptiness there if you're really 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 honest with yourself there was an emptiness a void in your life that that only God could fill and I pray that you did come to Christ during this time uh, of the virus and it's still not over yet but we we thank God that we have a, a, a another witness for Jesus uh, and we thank God that he's a young man who knows the truth and it wasn't always that way, and Jesus has changed his life. Uh, Jeremy Watson, it's uh, nice to meet you. I would shake your hand, but uh, <laughs> right now we can't do that. Yeah. So uh, thanks for coming on our broadcast today. Thanks for having me. And um, why don't you just share uh, right now, just start from where you are now, mm. and um, the difference between the light where you are and the darkness that you were. Mm -hmm. and why don't you just share what, what that means to you? Yeah. Um, you know, it was not, not too long ago, you know, uh, having setbacks in my life um, all the time. And I, I always see it as like a road with obstacles, you know. Um, and you're in a car and it's kind of like you, you have a, you're driving stick shift mm -hmm. and you go from neutral to fifth gear mm -hmm. instead of going from one to two to three to four all the way to five mm -hmm. and so uh i would say now where i'm at now it's i'm very grateful for where i'm at now you know um because not even like last year i was kind of like in a dark place myself and uh coming out of that was a lot of um self uh, recognition um seeking help um, looking for the right people, surrounding myself around the right people, and um, you know, just my name is was Jay. Everyone knows me as Jay uh, growing up, but my real name, my government name, is Jeremy. And so I used to not like the name Jeremy. I was so adamant about someone calling me Jeremy. And mm -hmm. so just last year, I changed all of that around and just really wanted to know what the true authentic Jeremy is. Mm. Uh, and, and, and you know, Jeremy, so many people have not done that mm -hmm. and don't want to do it. And they're 60, 70 years old. <laughs> and, and, and they're still uh, living uh, a, a um, I put it like this way here, a, a lie of not really examining your heart and your mind. And, right. and you did. And uh, I'm sure you have a peace now through the Lord Jesus that you've never had before. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, ever since I 
wanted to seek. You know, there's it's, it's a difference between looking for God and seeking God. The Bible teaches us to seek God. And so I'm as soon when I started seeking after him, um, boulders and, and weight came off my shoulders. Mm-hmm. You know, the peace of God, um, I could feel it more um, when I was going to church, when church was open, um, you know, around the people. Um, you know, I, I like I like recognition. Some, you know, it's, it's well, who doesn't? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah. so I would hear from a lot of people, my coworkers and people from church, and saying how much I've changed. And um, it's just it feels good to know that you know you're making an impact uh, just by changing yourself. And, and the, the recognition uh, by many people is not um, for a good cause. Right. Uh, m- many people is look at me. Look who I am. Right. Look at the billions of dollars I have. Absolutely. Uh, look at my name uh, and who I am, um, and that is not healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible says not to think of yourself more highly mm-hmm. than you ought to. So you should think of yourself highly because you're made after the image and likeness of God. Amen. And and so when you're thinking good about yourself and examining yourself. You know that you want to be more like Christ, Amen. because it's Christ in you yes. that that has um, shown through your actions, through your demeanor, through your face, your countenance uh, of what God has done and is doing in your life, and He's real. Absolutely. So why don't we just go back to to, to your upbringing uh, and and what was the situation over there? That that was um, you know just yeah. coming like uh, yeah I I mean it all started I would say when my parents split um, I lived in New York and uh, you know it was it was best for uh, for my mom and my brother and I to move to Connecticut um, and just because my mom and my father split they were they were they're best friends they're they've been friends ever since they just know that they can't be together you know <laughs> mm-hmm. um so but i love them dearly and you know they supported me in every way they could mm. you know um but it started from that point because when they split i was i had anger that i didn't know mm. i had and it built up over the years you know seeing my mother um you know going from boyfriend to boyfriend uh, seeing my father not really paying attention to you know the things that I'm interested in, and uh, when we moved to Connecticut, um, I got myself into you know around negative people, and uh, so it started from there. And uh, the uh, the lack of supervision, male supervision, <laughs> yeah, male supervision is is, 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 is <laughs> what. What, what is needed right. and, and that's why Satan comes to steal kill and destroy in John chapter 10 verse 10 the family mm-hmm. because when he can get the male out of the family uh, that's his goal right. because the man is the head of the house mm-hmm. and um, not that the man should lord over the woman no but he is the head that's what God made Adam first then Eve mm-hmm. And, and what happens is when he gets the male out, there's no male figure. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have a hard time, Jeremy, coming to Christ, Amen. to God, because they had an absentee father, they had a horrible father, and the father is supposed to be indirectly representing God. Mm-hmm. And, and the attributes of a father that's not good turns people off to God because God is a perfect father. When you come Amen. to Christ, you know him as not only God, uh, he's not God way out there, a uh, hundred million miles away, but he comes into your heart and he becomes your papa, he becomes your Absolutely. daddy. And so when your father's not in your life and when you did see him, he's not interested in what you're interested in. It must have caused you to, like, I want to become right. the, the man, I want to be recognized. Exactly. And did that happen to you? It happened to me um, in such a um, positive and negative way because I was, I had... It wasn't just me that people were looking up to. It was my little brother, you know, and the things that I was doing, he would follow. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I take blame on that. Mm -hmm. And so um, to to uh, 
not see my father interested or anything like that. I became more machismo, you know, and wanting to run the house or do whatever I wanted to do. And uh, authorities, they didn't, they, I couldn't bow down to authority. You know, if someone told, told me something, I would tell them back. And it came into school, it came into work, it came in every, every shape or form. Um, and I became the bully in school. I actually was the bully in school, which was horrible because I had done like some really messed up things to people. <laughs> yeah, you terrorized some of the children. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, um, and we see it all today in the country. Yeah. We see that um, those that are in authority don't have the authority, and we see people that know that right. are, are going and, and uh, they're, uh, basically their lawlessness. Right. And when lawlessness controls the land, um, then it's very, 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 <laughs> very, 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 very wrong, right. leading into a path of hell Absolutely. here on earth. You know? Absolutely. And so so um, did you uh, hang out with people that were destructive like you? Absolutely. Um, you know, People looked up to me, and um, I didn't know this back then. But you know, God has given me a gift of of teaching and working with other children and mm. um, being some uh, sort of like a big brother to to others. And back then, there were people that used to um, look up to me and that sort of speak. And I was they were negative because I was negative, and so mm. whatever I did. They wanted to do the same. I formed a music group, per se, and but it wasn't a music group. It was a gang, and so the the gang led into you know so much mischievous things like wearing bandanas and having fights and you know repping the flag and um, but there thank God there wasn't any guns there wasn't any drugs or anything like that. So I really thank God I didn't really get into that. But there was definitely a lot of negative people around me. Um, you got any fights? I've gotten into plenty of fights. It was crazy because I, I never really got into fights in New York, but when I moved to Connecticut, it was... It you was, think it would be the other way around. <laughs> yeah, I think it, yeah exactly. Think New York would be the place, right? <laughs> so, and it was in Connecticut. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I remember my first fights. I got jumped a bunch of times. Um, but I was, I was a strong guy, and I really... I loved fighting, you know, which um, which led me into going to juvenile jail and um, disrespecting my mother, and it led me into um, an alternative school, you know, kicked me out of school. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that when you're doing this, uh, you know, Jeremy, inside that anger must have just kept on building yes. up and building up like you were a walking time bomb. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank God that you weren't involved with guns or knives. Yeah, absolutely. Because you, know, yeah. you might be still in prison right now yeah. Yeah, doing a lot of time. I think what kind of deteriorated that anger was my distraction for women. You know, I was very um, into women. I loved being around them. And, and you know, and I, I've, I've gotten some trouble with, with women as well, but it kind of like deteriorated my anger, mm. you know, it, or distracted my anger, so to speak, mm. you know. Um, so the, the, did women take the place of maybe hardcore drugs and alcohol and yeah. things like that? Did you ever exper experiment uh, with the drugs and the alcohol? No, I would say my experiment with drugs and alcohol was was the women. It you was. Know? That's think, interesting. Yeah, I think the the, the drug was women, and mm. um, I think that's what it distracted me from because. Um, I wasn't very interested in, in it, you know, in alcohol or, or drugs until I became older because mm. at, when I became older and I was 21, I was like, okay, I'm 21, I'm an adult now. Mm. What, does, what does it feel like? Yeah. And still, I didn't like it, you know. Well, thank God you didn't <laughs> because um, there's a lot of um, young people, children, who haven't done things like gamble and uh, smoke marijuana um, because it, it's uh, the law. It was a law, right. but but now since um, foolishly and they don't know it's foolishly or maybe they do, uh, but uh, you know it brings in a lot of money. 
Yeah. And uh, so those that are starting now to gamble and starting to do some marijuana starting out, uh, most of the times, unless you're not a compulsive person, it's not going to escalate. Right. But uh, eventually, if you are compulsive, it's going to start out at a little, and it's going to end up destructive. Absolutely. And, and thank God that it didn't happen to you. So, so now uh, you're um, in your 20s, and uh, you uh, have a music group and stuff, and you're macho mm -hmm. with the bandetta. <laughs> uh, did you still feel an emptiness inside? Absolutely. You know, um, just to back it up a little bit, I, I did find Christ when I was 16. Um, How did that happen? You know, we had a friend that was, you know, in the gang life and in the streets. And um, you might know him. His name was TJ. Um, and I give him a lot of props for really um, pulling me out from the from the muck because um, he was in the he, he was in that, that street life and stuff like that. And I saw him. And then one day he just turned his whole life around to, to Christ radically. Mm. And I was amazed because he would go and preach, but in a way where um, like it attracted the youth. Mm. It attracted what, the, what was modern that day. Mm. And that was through music, that was through rapping in a, in a circle and just in a, and when you're rapping in a circle, you could rap about anything. He rapped about God. And that's how I got attracted to it. And I remember I came out of alter, um, one of the classes from the alternative school, and he was like rapping and stuff like that. And he uh, he asked me if I wanted to receive the Lord and Savior as, as my you know for my own, and I said yes. And and, and the thing is, is that once you come to Christ, um, there's a devil. Yeah. And um, when when you're not with Christ, uh, you're in his camp. Mm -hmm. And so. He's not going to bother you because um, he's got you. And you're doing what he wants you to do. You've turned your back on Christ mm -hmm. uh, or you maybe didn't even know about that relationship with Jesus. But now that you come to Christ, yeah. now that you went from darkness to light, mm -hmm. from death to, to and destruction to, to uh, life mm -hmm. more abundantly, he, he comes at you, after you. Yes. And, and so as a young young boy, 16, yeah. uh, it, it's not easy unless you're 100% sold Absolutely. out. Absolutely. So, so that's why, you know, as you were saying last year, you were different than you are this year because it's not that you don't love God and mm -hmm. that Jesus is not in your heart because right. you learned about him, but yet the enemy comes in and we are going to make mistakes and we are going to blow it. Right. And we're not perfect. Right. You know, and, and, and so... But here's the thing now, the greatest thing is that he's married to the backslider, mm. and, and, he, and he brings you back, mm -hmm. you know? And so when you were um, with the Lord at 16 and things like that, did, did you do music? Uh, did music? A lot of musicians are poets yeah. and rap. And, did, did you get involved with that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I found my voice at uh, maybe like at 12 or 13, but not really um, pursuing it, you know? And... I wanted to be out there though, and so I at 16 when I found Christ. Uh, before that, I was doing a little music here and there, rapping and you know, doing doing a little singing here and there. When I came to Christ, I was the person, the radical person that helped that helped me got saved. I was doing radical things too through music, um, and he brought me to Holy Smoke to a place called Holy Smoke in Norwalk and um, I was there was a platform there where I was able to use that gift and talent. And tell you tell know. them what Holy Smoke is. Yeah, well Holy Smoke is is a place, it's a safe haven for anybody. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist, it doesn't matter if you're saved, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what religion you are. It's a, it's a safe haven where you you could talk about God in a safe place. You could do music, there's food and you get to connect with people in the community. And, and, and what, what what age group is the Holy Smoke kind of targeting for? It's definitely targeted towards, towards the young crowd, mm. towards the teenagers, towards the, the backsliders, towards the, mm. you know, the people that are struggling and um, going through hard times. 
the the kids, mm. you know. And it's outside of the church. And it's outside of the church. Yeah. It's in a library, yeah. you know. They rent it out uh, on a Friday night, mm. you know. And you know, instead of a Friday night going on the streets, there's mm. there's, a, there's a place there you and, could be safe. And, at. and a lot of youth come, right? A lot of youth come. Yeah. A lot of youth's parents come because yeah. they start coming every every time, and yeah. the parents want to know what it is and. And then the grandparents, and then their aunts and uncles and cousins, and so. So, so have you uh, have you have you made a song? I have. I have made a couple of songs. Um, there was a there's a song that uh, my two friends and I uh, we had created. It's called "Now I See the Light." Now you see the light. Now I see we'll, the light. We'll get that on the show screen uh, yeah. later on, and and. Um, and uh, is it on YouTube? It's on YouTube. Um, if you type in uh, "Now I See the Light" music video, you'll see it's the first one up there. It's uh, mm. it's myself singing. I'm not rapping in it, but um, I'm singing in it. And it's uh, T, uh, Tom K and Abram, and they share their stories. And they mm. and my job was to put their stories and make a chorus together and kind of blend blend the stories in and make it profound. Yeah. Now, now I see the light. Now I see the light. Yeah. And and uh, it, it it's good. We'll have that up there for that. So, uh, what would you say um, to people out there uh, in the audience that have um, are listening to the show? Just look into this uh, old camera over here, Jeremy, and just speak uh, what 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 God has put put on your heart, because. Um, Everyone that comes to Christ has a different burden right. for people. Right. Yeah. You know, and not everybody is a clone. Mm. So, what what does God have uh, uh, on your heart about what's going on in our country today? Speaking right. that, I would just say, you know, it's tough. And I know it may be hard wherever you're sitting at, wherever you're laying at, but God is omnipotent. He he loves you. He truly does. Um, and God is still God through the midst of turmoil, through the midst of what you're going through. Um, God is still God. And he can still bless you and bless whatever is going on around your situation. And, and the thing is, is that people sometimes have a shallow relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. They don't do what you said seek after him mm. yeah yes it, it's one thing if if a woman lost a diamond ring she's going to seek after <laughs> yeah, it yeah especially if she knows <laughs> i haven't left the house right <laughs> and i put it someplace yeah is she going to just casually look for it <laughs> or is she going to be looking yeah. for that diamond ring right like desperately <laughs> desperately yeah and, and 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 that's what god wants he wants people to seek him desperately Although he's very, very, very easy to find. Mm -hmm. You just call upon him. Yeah. He says, I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that, that you know it's not. And a, a lot of people have turned to Christ during this coronavirus. Yeah. Um, a lot of the Bibles, when it first happened, were like sold out uh, over the Internet and in the stores before they closed down. And and there's going to be a, a worldwide revival, Amen. and, and we need that. it uh, in the country because we have a light and dark. We have the uh, people living by what they see and and the unseen world, you know. And so, what what, what are you doing for 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 work now? Because you you said that you like would, you have a gift of teaching. Yeah, and so uh, I became a teacher, a pre-K teacher, uh, working with the youth. Uh, never thought I would work that young. Uh, but I work as uh, in a in a daycare center where it could be substituted as a school, um, and I target uh, with pre-K and toddlers. Um, so it's a it's a it's a hard job, but I love it, and that's what I do uh, professionally. And at church, I also work with the youth. That's good yeah. because the the youth, uh, especially the young um, young boys. Um, they might not have a father, right? Uh, like you had a father, but you didn't have a father, right? And uh, they're getting mentored 
you know, no, but by you. Right. And and that's that's great. Yeah. You know, to be able to ha have that to uh, to happen and occur. And the the Lord is has a plan and a purpose for our life. To give us a hope in the future, right, right. and and so you, you're just on, you know, you're on the right track, Amen. and and the thing is, is that, you know, we just can't get off that track. Exactly. You know, and the devil wants to get off that track, and just, you know, we got to keep focused on, on that track. You have to go to gear one. That's it, gear one instead of gear five, because right. that'll get you off. And and just want to ask you about um, people that knew Jeremy, J J mm -hmm. J yeah before. Yeah. Um, have you seen any of them since you've come to Christ? Oh yeah. And have they seen a change in your life? Um, you know, they the I would say the the people that are closer to me are, are my father now, um, my mother, my brother. They're the, the they're they're important to me because I didn't growing up and and being in anger and doing all this other mm -hmm. stuff. I kind of secluded them out of things that I was doing, and so I would say those are the most important. The people that knew Jay. I would say my family knew Jay first, and and they knew how I was, and so for them to see that change, mm. you know, and now my father and I have a great relationship. That's beautiful. You know, uh, my mother and I have a great relationship. My That's brother beautiful. and I have a great relationship, mm. and we're growing from there, you know. So I would say those are the, the first people I would I would say. Mm. There's other friends and stuff like that 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 they still call me Jay because you know the old Jay, with, yeah, which, yeah. which is fine. You know, I'm not gonna say, hey, <laughs> call me Jay. I'm not. I'm not the Jay that said, well, don't call me Jeremy. I'm, and with anger, right? I'm Jeremy. Yeah. That's I'm Jeremy now. And if you call me Jay, it's fine. Yeah. You know, you knew me as that, but I'm not that, and yeah. I, I'm okay with Did that. Did they ever ask why? Yeah, I would tell them. I would tell them that you know, like I've came from darkness, and you know, and then I've I've became an thought on an authentic self uh, of myself and um, mm. because you know growing up and being in church and 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 trying to find my way and uh, seeing what church was and wanting to be that way I was trying to be like that and I was being fake I wasn't really being real yeah, and you when know. you say you, you grow up in church trying to be like that, it's it's the religious teaching. It's the religious teaching, exactly. What they make you cling to, right? Instead of having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, right. uh, that's where your allegiance should be. Right. And the church, uh, many, many, many denominations are like that. But in the denominations, also, they have churches where they say Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to do it. Thank you, Jeremy, so much and you. for uh, sharing your testimony, and we, we hope that the, the people will look at your video Thank and you. uh, see the light. Yes, God yes. God bless you. God bless. Well, the Lord is good, and His mercies endure forever. Uh, if you don't know Jesus today, just call upon Him. Ask Him to forgive you of all your stuff you've done in your life that's wrong. Ask him to come into your heart, and he'll come in and he'll change your life. And it's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to go from right to uh, first gear overnight. You might be in fifth gear, then you'll go down to fourth and third and, and so forth. But he's the way. You'll have eternal life. You, you won't be afraid to die because when you die, you know you'll be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. Tune in next week. Side.